There are thousands of smart home security cameras available today and far too often were sold based on one or two supposedly strong features. Words like AI recognition, color night vision, and local storage fill sales pages with things that get us to buy. And when I review cameras like that, I'll often find a major gap or I'll find the need for a subscription or I'll find an issue with installation. So I personally have been frustrated by the lack of a well-rounded, simple, and extremely effective smart home security camera option that does all the things we truly need. And when I received the pack of wire-free mag cams from Tapo, I thought I was getting another system that could do a couple things well because I had used TP-Link cameras in the past and hadn't been all that excited about their offering. But something has come together for this company. I wanna show you how simple and easy and effective smart home cameras should be through a breakdown of how these work today. One of the biggest pain points of cameras today is whether you can actually identify someone. You'd think that would come first, but companies will tout 2K, 4K, or 1080p, but clarity is what matters. Things like lights being in the frame, lighting conditions in general, or the distance ratings of IR LEDs change how things look. These cameras have consistently given me a clear picture in any of those situations, and I've pushed the boundaries with smart lighting being in frame. The other big point I've had is the start time of a camera's recording. When we rely on the camera to identify the time to start filming, we often miss most of the event and barely see the person. These are consistently giving me one to two extra seconds of critical footage so I can actually see what happened. Now, a lot of companies are coming out with dual cameras because their field of view is being balanced with resolution and sensor size. They're worried a wide field of view will take away from that clarity, and they're right. This camera has given me a huge field of view, even allowing me to see all the way into my neighbor's driveway while still maintaining that clarity. Something else we see with most cameras is that they are limited in where you can place them by the mounting options and things like IP ratings. Now, these cameras have the highest IP rating I think I've ever seen, and they have three mounting options that can be expanded further by a little bit of ingenuity. Now, many cameras promise AI detection, and many cameras fail completely. There are very few companies that I have seen that can actually tell you when a vehicle, a person, or even an animal is in frame. And not only does this camera show you what it's detecting when you look at the live stream, but it gives you proper notifications. And whenever I watch a clip, I'm actually getting what I expected when it said a vehicle was detected. And that's before we talk about reliability, local storage options, the details of that AI detection, an impressive settings menu, that gives you what you need and none of the other crap, integration and automation options with Amazon, and the fact that for the first time in a very long time, I truly have a camera in my hand that does not need a subscription at all. This is just scratching the surface. I'm gonna show you how this is a holistic solution for smart home security cameras and how TP-Link has finally put it all together. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. Obviously, when I look at a camera, I find some gaps and I find some issues, but I've been really hard pressed here. So you're gonna hear about some of the issues I did find, but don't expect a ton on this one. And I have to thank TP-Link for sponsoring today's video. That doesn't give them like a positive review here on Automate Your Life, but it does mean they get this spot and actually, I'm really happy they get this spot because I want to share with you what a smart home camera should be like. To show you some of the physical attributes of these cameras, I put together a first impression segment where I unbox the product. Now you're going to see how well these are built and what I see from the outside looking in. And we'll talk about how these set up and install and how the settings and features work and can really drive that performance and automation options. Now this is a three pack 
of the Tapo. They're called the Wire Free and they're indoor or outdoor mag cams. And they're called mag cams because they have a magnetic mount that's going to allow you to just stick these to it. Now, a couple of things about these cameras that are really impressive. First of all, they're 2K. These are not your standard 1080p cameras. They have that magnetic connection. And I gotta tell you, they look pretty impressive getting them out of the box. But the other thing is that they contain a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. That's gonna give you around 300 days of battery life. And of course, they've got a solar panel for getting infinite battery power out of these. Now, essentially, I've got three sets of these. This three pack, it's actually only available in a few stores, but you can get a one pack kit just about anywhere. Now, that's a very strong magnetic mount. Uh, you're gonna have some options here. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, there is a tripod mount in the back of this. So if you don't just wanna use the magnetic mount, you want a little more security, you can get different mounts with this. I love how sealed this camera is. There is no chance of any issues. The, the way this feels too, this is not like a really shiny surface. This is a bit of a brushed coating around it. And I think that's gonna wear really well over time. The other mounting components, you know, you have your standard mounts. I really like the magnetic one because that makes it a completely wire-free situation. <laughs> I honestly, I don't know if I can get that off. Oh, <laughs> the, the super strong magnets on that. There's also a, a sticky pad. And of course you have the mounting hardware for all of this. You do get a charging cable, very simple, USB. This is a micro USB. Some people will complain about that. I could care less. And you have essentially three compartments on the top of this. Now this is another important piece to this because in a lot of cases you end up spending money on subscription services. Well, you're not going to have to do that here. This camera is taking a 512 or up to a 512 gigabyte micro SD card to record your clips on. That wouldn't require a service. Now, that's a, that's a very good sealed compartment. And here's the micro USB port as well. Uh, we have the power button on the top of that. Now, this is called the A200. Oh. <laughs> wow, guys. I, you know, this is big. Clearly, it's going to keep that camera charged forever. I, I mean, I feel like, I feel like this panel might charge my car, and I have a gas car. Four and a half watts max power outage, uh, max voltage 5.2 volts. So if you're looking for a solar panel, guys, you get a quick start guide with this, but that's a thicker one there. You get a mounting guide, the mounting hardware you're going to need, a couple of wall anchors. I don't know what those little white pieces are. And then an actual mount. Now the mount itself feels pretty lightweight. In a lot of cases, you end up with this like beefy metal mount, but I like how this one feels. Um, it's, it's nice and thin, but you do hear a little bit of metal in there. So I don't think we're going to run into any issues with this. So now we're ready to go get these cameras set up. I'm going to put a few around my home, replace an existing system. I'm going to see how this solar panel does. You know, I'm here in Canada. We don't get that much sun during the days now. And we're gonna see how this whole system performs. So let's go through the install and setup process. Sadly, it's pretty commonplace to buy these kinds of products based on the marketing materials. And obviously companies are trying to sell you on the product. So 
They don't want to tell you about these gaps or these little things that you have to do once you get the product. Now the setup process can be a minefield because of that. And when I started to set these up, I got a little worried. The fact is the Tapo apps setup process is very simple and TP-Link is putting a massive amount of information into this process so you get it right. They have screens that help you guarantee your Wi-Fi strength. Screens that show you how their cloud and local storage options work. Mounting options with pitfalls for how you direct the camera correctly and how to get proper detection done. In a lot of cases, these kinds of screens could cause you to be frustrated and return the product. And so when I see things like this, what I do is I test them out. Now I ignored the fact that you're not supposed to point these at trees. I didn't point at the sun directly, but I did point at a lot of smart lighting. They show you that you need to mount a little bit to the side so that subjects are walking across the view. I ignored that entirely in my front installation. People walk directly at the camera. I ignored the height suggestions and the 10 to 15 degree downward angle request. I even ignored the request to keep the PIR sensor aligned right. I just plain old installed these wrong in every way I could. And what you heard from me today has been the performance in that situation. Those are the kinds of moments where I become really impressed with a product because they've done so much to tell you how you can get the best performance, but even some of the worst performance is fantastic. Now you have all of those requests from TP-Link to install these correctly so they work right. And there's actually a real genius in this physical hardware and the physical mounting options because they actually give you the opportunity to do this right. Now the first thing is there's a tripod mount on the back of those cameras. It's not on the side or the bottom or in some weird place. So that means you can get these pointed in any direction you'd like using any standard mount that you have or that you go and buy. If you don't want to use a mount like that, the mag in MagCam becomes an easy way to do the same thing. Now this magnet opens up options for any metal surface and I think lots of people would like this setup in sheds and garages because of the clarity and the simplicity of that. And even better, is that if you don't wanna put a screw in your wall, they give you a sticker that's actually really sticky and can actually hold all of this. Oh man, <laughs> this magnet. So physically, you can mount these just about anywhere around your home and with that wide field of view plus the clarity and some great options for detection, you can get the physical install right. The only thing I will say that could affect your installation is if you want that solar panel over there because it's big and while the mounting hardware is good it's still something that'll really change the look of the spot you place it in now every camera has drawbacks i'm going to tell you about a few of those but some people will see the 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi connection as a drawback that again expands the area that you can place these cameras in the 5 gigahertz wi-fi never reaches as far and most people can't get it outside of their home reliably for something like a camera to stream. And this is where I can start to talk about living with these cameras and how they perform because one of the pitfalls of many cameras today is that you go into the streaming feed after getting a notification, you wanna see what's happening. You sit and you wait for buffering and then you'll often get the stream having to rebuffer or restart while you're looking. So you're sitting there waiting for technology. Now these take two to three seconds to start the stream, but then the stream is less than a second behind what's actually happening in the world and they have never paused to rebuffer the stream. That's wild because I've also never changed the stream from that 2K resolution. And with other makers, I've had it where it starts to rebuffer at 360p resolution constantly. And I won't name names here, but the architecture that they've done for the network and the way they're streaming things has been done correctly. And that's the really weird thing for me because I've never experienced a network or a streaming issue with these. And other makers put like a hub or a DVR box in your home in order to make sure that the cameras can stream 
right to your phone. But that hasn't been required here and it's working as well as those systems for me. Now with the right features, a standard smart home camera becomes a powerful one. So here's a few ways you can customize this offering and improve the performance. Now on the note of those AI detection options, this one has one of the easiest settings screens to manage the different types of detections you can do and to set your zones or your boundaries really well. I'll tell you that it's not perfect on the side of the zones because sometimes I do get detection for people or vehicles outside of the zone, but that's only when you do the install wrong. See, in my backyard, I set it up properly for people and cars to move across the view and it's been near perfect with its zones. Now for myself, I've also relied on the 30 day trial of their cloud storage, but everyone wants to know about local storage options and they market the 512 gigabyte SD card option. But I really like that there's a setting for NAS storage through RTSP. Now the battery performance is really good and I've spoken a little bit about how big these batteries are and how many days you're supposed to get. But in general, I'm having less than a percentage come off of these per day. And that's with really heavy use. That's me trying to detect a lot of things, take a lot of video and look at a lot of footage. Plus I've been very aggressive with the settings. Now what I mean by that is you can cause these cameras to take recordings all the way down to a zero second wait time. That means you can restart a second recording immediately after one is ended. And that's after you set how long it can continue recording after the event is over and a maximum clip length. And one of the things I noticed when I got these cameras was that they were only running at 15 frames per second. But you can set the resolution as well as change the frames per second. Plus you have other quality changes like the fact you can go from a black and white infrared LED to their color night vision, which I think is one of the very best in the industry right now, if not the best. Now let's be honest and say that most smart home cameras are useless when it comes to automation. You either need a subscription to get those automation features or they don't respond fast enough to be useful or the options are just non-existent. Now I'll tell you that if you're using Google Home, SmartThings or Apple HomeKit, you shouldn't expect anything because these don't integrate today with SmartThings or HomeKit. I don't see any options for really automating with Google either. And in fact, for me, the streaming with Google Home app hasn't worked right. But if you're an Amazon user, this has a completely unique offering for you. This is the first camera that responds fast enough when someone gets in front of a camera to start a routine and to actually notify you before they get to your door. The maximum I've had to wait for my Fire TV to tell me that someone has been seen by my camera is three seconds. This is very useful for people who want to monitor and know when someone's coming up to their home. And again, you don't need any subscription for this, which seems to happen every time we talk about person detection and automation. And the other thing I like is that I can set up those privacy zones, so I'm not streaming something that I shouldn't over to Amazon or Google. So I hope you guys see how holistic of an option this is. And I think it's very rare to have this set of features come together in a smart home security camera offering, especially one at this price. I like a lot about this. And at the very least, I hope you've learned something today. Now, if you wanna pick up some of these, all the links are below and you can get them in some stores physically. So check out the details there in the description. Now something you always need to pair with smart home cameras is a smart video doorbell. And I've done a comparison of four of the most popular models out there today. That's in the video that's on screen there. So check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.